Uh, now uh, I will move a little bit the focus of the talk of today. Uh, this talk I will present to you uh, some experimental results of uh, astrophysical ices illuminated by ionizing radiation, such as X-rays and cosmic rays. Okay, and the implications on this research in, in astrobiology. The overview is I will talk about uh, the scenario, an astrophysical uh, scenario, and then the similarities and difference between X rays and cosmic rays. And I will move to X rays and uh, experiments <coughs> with ions. Okay, uh, as we know, uh, there is a lot of radiation in space and also special environment in which molecules are very cold. And we call this as astrophysical ice. For example, this picture here represents the interior of a molecular cloud, very cold environment. In such place, the radiation uh, illuminates molecules in frozen states and induce chemical reaction. Mo uh, radiation such as cosmic rays and soft X-rays can penetrate inside this environment in contrast with ultraviolet radiation that only illuminates the outer borders. Um, these pictures represent the, the sources uh, of X-rays and cosmic rays that are known. Supernovae, pulsars, uh, pro protostars, black holes, and AGNs, all of these. Uh, now I will move to these slides just to show you some difference and similarity between what happens when those ionizing, ionizing agents interact with matter. In the case of cosmic rays, a lot of energy is deposited in a small track during the target, in, inside the target, ionizing entirely the sample. And a lot of electron is produced. And the after this, the electrons plays the roles and they plays the chemistry inside the ice. In the case of X-rays and UV, uh, there is a lot of production of electrons, but in the scale, you can see here that the damage is uh, very uh, diminished, okay? In both cases, there is a plume that is produced and release molecules to gas phase as well. And reaction can occur inside this, the ices and also in the gas phase, in the high pressure gas phase, just above the ice. Uh, additionally, when X-rays illuminate a molecular cloud, the most energy is deposited on the outer part of the cloud. In contrast with the cosmic ray illumination that deposited most energy inside the cloud. We can make an um, association with these two kinds of uh, oven, uh, like a barbecue for the X-rays that can burn the meat from outside first, and like a microwave oven that can heat the potato in inside first and then outside. You can have this in mind. So X-rays and cosmic rays can trigger <coughs> different chemical reactions in different places in a molecular cloud, okay? Okay, now I will move to some experiment with X-rays. <clears throat> Basically, the experiment, we, we have a cryostat, a cold uh, crystal, in which we deposit molecules that can simulate uh, the molecule that exists in space. And after this, we illuminate with X-rays and also with cosmic rays, analogs. And we, in those experiments, we monitor the sample change as a function of radiation dose from time to time using infrared spectroscopy, okay? And we observe that we starting from simple compounds and after irradiation, we have uh, the ion cement in the complexity of the sample. Okay, uh, some experiment were performing in Brazil uh, in the using the, chem, the, this machine in my institute, coupled to the synchrotron uh, in Campina, Campina City, close to Sao Paulo City. And this is the ultra high vacuum chamber. Um, this is the picture of the main chamber with the uh, part in we, uh, that we deposit the sample. And here is the mount 
in the synchrotron. We moved the chamber to the synchrotron and installed the synch in this uh, beam line. And I will present you some uh, result of the experiment. These are still some pictures. And, and these two pictures here is sample preparation. We can see a needle here and a, a white ice covering this, the sample holder. And this is in a picture during the sample irradiation with X-rays. Okay, first result uh, is um, the chemical enhancement during a simulation of Europa's ice, for example. We start with this composition, water, CO2, SO2, and a little bit ammonia. And after uh, the fluence of 10 to 18 X-rays, we produce a lot of compounds, and such as a precursor of uh, sulfuric acids and others. And from the evolution of the infrared bands, we can derive the cross-section for the destruction and for the production of the new species. And we can uh, understand the chemical equilibrium that happens every time we illuminate those ices. So, from the evolution of the bands, we, we fit some function and we derive the cross-section of destruction and production. Okay, I move this. Uh, this is another experiment of uh, destruction of amino acids by X-rays. We did similar methodology. And uh, we start with uh, five different samples, three amino acids and two uh, nucleobase, illuminating by X-rays. And we saw as a function of exposure time or fluence that the amino acid is more, much more destroyed than nucleobase. So this helps us to understand why amino acid is might be difficult to observe in space. And maybe nucleobase can be easier to be observed since they are more resistant. Another experiment with X-rays is the production of nucleobase uh, adenine from a mixture of nitrogen and <coughs> methane in attempt to simulate the aerosols in Titan or in the surface of Pluto Moon. So uh, we illuminate the sample for three days continuously, and after some time, we observe this thing in the eyes, uh, the residue at room temperature, and the chromatography analysis shows the presence of adenine. So this is very nice to understand the presence of nucleobase in the space. Okay, now moving to some ion experiment. The methodology is quite similar, but the, the result I'll present you here was done in France at the GANU Ion Accelerator with my colleagues. Uh, this first experiment, uh, we illuminate uh, ammonia containing ice and uh, we observe the destruction of the parental molecules, but there is some lines in the infrared that might be associated with glycine. So this is kind of a research that is driving us to the formation of complex molecules in radiolis of ices. Another interesting uh, experiment we got is the formation of insaturated hydrocarbons during cosmic ray bombardment. We start with a uh, cyclohexane mixed ices and after some time we saw that we produce unsaturation in the molecules. We produce double bonds and triple bonds, and we release molecular hydrogen to gas phase. This type of experiment shows us that cosmic rays induce the formation of double and triple bond in molecular in space, enhancing the complexity of samples. And uh, there is other experiment investigating the destruction of amino acids in space. And in this type of experiment, we uh, uh, was able to understand which part of molecule is more sensitive to radiation during radiolysis. For example, monitoring different uh, infrared bands, we can see different parts of molecules. And we observed that certain parts of molecules is much more sensitive to radiation than others. 
this is one uh, interesting result that we can observe that we can have from the experiments. Uh, finally, I will present you this last experiment. Uh, this, uh, we just start with the glycine in the ice phase at 14 Kelvin and a, a second experiment at 300 Kelvin and we radiate it with cosmic rays. And what we observe in the end is glycine is destroyed, okay, but a fraction of the molecules are joined together to produce peptide bonds. So, again, the infrared spectrum as a function of fluence, so you start here, and as a function of fluence, we can see a destruction of some bands, but if you made a zoom in this part, this uh, Gaussian in red represent the infrared bands of amid, uh, amid, amid groups that is related with the formation of peptide bonds between glycine. So, cosmic rays can also produce peptide bonds if you have glycine in interstellar environment. Um, to summary, my short talk, uh, X-ray and cosmic ray induce molecular chemistry enhancement in cold space environment, producing complex molecules. Electrons triggered by radiation play the most important role, but also radiation flux and ice temperatures play some roles. Uh, the concept of chemical equilibrium is important because after some time, every sample we illuminate from both using X-ray or cosmic rays reach a chemical equilibrium. This concept is quite nice. I would like to, to finish this talk with this cartoon that uh, even we, had, we have the ingredients, the pan, the oven, and the clock uh, to make a, 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 a cake. This is kind of a metaphoris, metaphors. Uh, <coughs> In the in, in sense of uh, producing, uh, we need to know how to use this to produce a cake. It's not obvious that mixing every these in, all of these ingredients we produce a cake. But in the term of life, the universe know how to mix everything to produce life. But the big question is: Is it by chance or using a recipe? And I'd like to thank you your attention. And this is the picture of my girl.